Hey everybody, back with another video. Today we're talking uh, Booster. It's the fat, fast NITRAM FS generator. Um, it's based on the Distri project and it aims to create small and fast init images. If you look over here at the man page, it's again tool for creating init images needed at the early stages of the Linux boot process. Booster is made with speed and full disk encryption use cases in mind. Booster advantages. Fast image building time, fast boot time. Now, that's the main advantage for me. Uh, with this and DNIT, like my system boots ridiculously quick, I really enjoy playing around with different kernels. And ever since I've started using Booster, it takes me about maybe a second Per kernel to make the image. If any of you guys are using making it CPIO or drag it, you'll know it takes a lot longer than that, even with it completely optimized and whatnot. And you don't really miss out on any features, at least I don't, using Booster. So it's a no brainer for me. Out of the box supports Lux based encryption, which is wonderful. Uh, I'm going to probably do a video on setting up an encrypted laptop with Lux and encrypted swap and shims set up. That way people can't swap out the kernel or anything. Basically just a, an ironclad physical Linux system just for the laptop that I carry around everywhere with me. Since I live in a van, you might be able to tell. But that's a story for another day. Um... Clavis style data building, if any of you guys know what that is, automatically detects and unlocks system D encryption role type partition, encry partition encryption. It's easy to configure, it really is. It's just configured in YAML. If any of you know what that is, yet another markup, markup language, it's just stupid easy to configure. You don't need to put that much in the configuration file. I'll get to that in just a second, and it automatically, uh, Automatic host configuration discovery creates minimum images. Uh, yeah, the images are stupid small. I gave myself 500 megabytes for my boot partition because uh, I like to play around with different kernels, and I do not need it. I plan on going to downsize and putting some of that into swap or something because I just I don't need that for boot because I have four or five kernels installed right now, and I'm not even using 200 megabytes. Like Booster is just stupid small. Um, you can see over here, it just comes with the booster program and generates programs into uh, boot, uh, like you would expect. You can just install it for uh, normal, like booster, it's just in the Arch repository. I'm on Arctix and it works for me, so it probably works on all Arch-based systems. I'm not sure about other uh, Linux distros, but probably if it gets ported, then it could work no problem. Uh, this is the syntax for making images, although I recommend using the script that comes with Booster. If you use the script that comes with Booster, it generates the image, uh, I think against the kernel that it downloads with it, I'm not sure. When I generated it this way, running one of the, the real glitch kernels, the TKG, uh, that was compiled with G++ and like different settings and a different one. Another one was compiled with LLVM and the CFS schedule scheduler. Uh, it wouldn't load into it, so I had to come back into my normal one and run the script that comes with Booster to load that. So I just recommend using the script every time to just make sure hiccups don't happen. Um... It gets auto-detected by Refined. I can show you my Refined uh, manual boot stanza for it, but it's uh, it's pretty simple. You basically just add booster, the word booster, in front of whatever you, you were doing before instead of RAM FS. So it, it's not rocket science. Um, same with System D automatically detects encryption. Uh, here's, here's more information about that. Uh, an example of the config here, it's going to be at uh, etcbooster.yamal and 
just the syntax is going to be word un with underscores, uh, separating them as the names, and then just colon space uh, value. It has debug parameters, just in case anything's going wrong. You know, everything you would expect. You can early load stuff, everything you would expect there. Uh, so, it's not too complicated. If anything, this is the simplest of all three options. Uh, Make an CPIO, drag it, and then Booster is by far the simplest. It's so small, fast, easy to configure. Uh, you're going to see any of the more configuration options that you would need in here. Uh, things like compression. Uh, you can use, I think, ZFS with this. Uh, enable LLVM. So, and RAID. So it has everything that you would expect. Uh, so if you want to make sure that it can do the things you would need to replace either making it CPIO or Dracket, uh, go ahead and check the man page. It's very well documented. Um, coming over here, we can see my booster is very, very simply configured. I set my images to be ZSTD compression level 9 and to use all of my threads. Uh, just T0 is just turn on multi-threading for as many threads are available on the system. I early load the AMD GPU module and uh, B3FS because I have a B3FS mount and home partition. That way I don't have to worry about how much space to give to mount and how much space to give to home. I can have them, you know, all the good stuff you guys get it. I can do a video on that if anyone's interested. And if you come to my uh, manual boot stanza, You'll see, very simple, I'm trying out these two kernels right now. Uh, yeah, just add booster to the front, and it's as simple as that. If you look in my boot, I have one, two, three, four different kernels installed, and it's not taking up very much space at all used 28 percent of 500 megabytes not even 200 megabytes is used so i made this way too big because i have more experience with a nit ram fs and then some with dracket and both of those would take up a lot more space um an example of generating the images now every time you have to update your kernel it has to generate a new image. Everyone who uses Arch is aware of that. They update fairly often. And it, it takes a minute. Uh, and Dracket takes a minute too. Although Dracket's slightly better than making it CPIO. But right now I have one, two, three, four kernels installed. And if it even takes five seconds, I would be surprised. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so four seconds. Uh, basically a second per kernel installed. It is stupid fast. It automatically detects your encryption. It is stupid simple to configure. The boot time is crazy fast compared to making it CPIO and faster than Dracket 2, which I don't know if you guys have tried them out. It's slightly faster than making it CPIO. So with this and D in it, my system boots up stupid quick like you, you blink and it's already to the login screen um, it'll, it's going to be easy for me to configure uh, encryption later because it automatically detects everything if any of you guys have done it on grub you have to like pass files around and whatnot uh, on drag it it's slightly well, I don't know Sorry, not grub. Uh, making it seem you have to like give it binaries and whatnot and on drag it I'm not sure I've never tried on drag it but I'm stoked to try on Booster. I'm really psyched, uh, psyched on it. Um, it does say that it's secure. I'm not an expert on that, but that's pretty cool. It's written in C. Uh, I can g maybe go through the source code on a video sometime. We can look at it together. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's written by the guys who develop Arch Linux too. So 
it kind of just makes inherent sense to me to be using it on an arch based system over making it CPAO or drag it, even if it's not the default. Um, and you can just install it from the arch repositories, or if you have arch compatibility on um, Arctix, you can install it that way. So that's my video on Booster. It's my favorite way to make your init uh, ram fs image it's fast simple uh secure i guess that, i don't really care too much about that but yeah it's fucking fast and simple it's gonna boot in no problem super easy to set up so go ahead and give it a try